let's get into our questions if we can. Uh, so the first one is, many directors are feeling outmatched by the ferocity of changing technology, emerging risks, new competitors, etc. So what are the advantages of having a, an IT, a tech person actually on your board, you know, holding a board seat? I know this is happening a lot, but, but you know, there are still some boards who are a little old fashioned and the IT guy or girl doesn't quite make it onto the, onto the board. Um, Ed, what, what are your feelings about this? What, you know, do you think the government is keen to see this kind of representation at a board level? Do you know that some uh, IT people suffer from some social uh, disadvantages? So they wear funny Christmas jumpers and funny Christmas hats at uh, you know, serious top level discussions. But I do agree with you that uh, absolutely they should have, uh, board should have tech people on the board. I think the fundamental point here is that too many people think that uh, they have a company and digital is an add-on and they don't actually think we're running a digital company. We may have bricks and mortar buildings, we may be selling bricks and mortar products, but even you know the local supermarket that you pop down to to get your pint of milk, all of that distribution and so on is functioning on digital. And at the very least, there should be someone on the board who understands something about cyber security, because that little supermarket, uh, to kind of um, echo what Tuge was saying about uh, street bees, you know, is hoovering up uh, data, very sensitive data that could uh, uh, needs to be, um, you know, kept safe. Uh, but also, it's constantly looking at uh, new technology innovations. Uh, the trucks taking the stuff to the supermarket are depending on technology. So someone on your board who understands what is going on in technology is, in my view, absolutely essential. Thank you, Ed. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you talk about cybersecurity. Re recently, I took my cybersecurity, head of cybersecurity, along to my board at Naked Wines to kind of give them the run through of the current risks we were monitoring. And at the end of it, our last recommendation to the board was, actually, we'd like to take you through a cybersecurity training course because you guys can't ask us these questions and not know what the answers mean. And they were all really up for it. So that's really good. A Anna, what, what about you? You sit on some boards, you know, you've been, you've been there. Are you, are you finding, you know, you're a good representation? Are there lots of people on these boards with, who are tech savvy? I, I completely agree that we do need people with uh, technology skills on the board. and. Uh, you know, most businesses are technology businesses, they just don't know it yet, right? So I think that's the, the, the main issue. Some interesting uh, data, which in you know, one of the data points that came out in 2016 when Accenture did a, a, a survey was that only 6% of big bank directors had anything to do with technology, for instance. And that is in 2016, when the entire banking sector was well on to, the, to being disrupted by, you know, technology-based challenges, right? So that's sort of the problem. And I, I agree with you that, uh, yes, it, there need to be, needs to be more technology representation, but there is also a, another side to the coin, which is just like the boards need to listen to technology a lot more and it needs to be more of a, an ear for technology from the board side. I think there is something that the technology leaders need to do to become uh, fit, more fit or suitable to the board environment because working at the board level requires slightly different skill sets. It requires being able to go outward and sort of turn into a bit of a, a bit more about technology in the context of the business rather than, you know, more focused on technology. So I think there is a, I've seen that there are some boards who have actually gone out of their way to try and bring in digital nets, technology nets, whatever they call it. Then, but then they struggle to take full advantage of that, their skill sets because there is that little gap still remaining. So I think boards need to, to actively seek and develop technology skills, but at the same time, technology leaders need to, at some point in their career, if they, have, if they are so interested, they need to start developing a separate set of skills which make them very effective at board level. So I think both of those are required. I mean, I think that's really interesting. It's, you, know, you don't want to hire the IT guy, put him on the board and say, right, we're covered now. You know, sort of thing. You, you, you know, it needs to be a bit more in, in investment and diligence. Yeah. Tucci, I mean, this this is probably something which which you've experienced, right? I mean, we we've got Robert Hook, one of our one of our um, 
uh, audience members saying he couldn't agree more, more, more with this. The digital services and medias are as deeply embedded in every part of life in 2020 as electricity, water and sewerage. Well, that's fine, but you're not running an electro electricity, water or sewerage business. You're running something that's a little bit hard to understand for the common person, right? So how important has it been for you, particularly with your fundraising, to, to make sure that the people that you're talking to at board level have good understanding of, of technology and where it's taking your business? Fantastic question. And I think it's part of our job, actually, to learn how to explain in a way that anyone can understand. And it's not just a challenge for fundraising, also to onboard customers. Uh, we work with world's largest consumer companies from Unilever, Pepsi, PNG to IKEA. And your counterparts who are buying this solution do not necessarily have PhDs in physics. And they shouldn't need to. We should be able to explain in a way that it's accessible to anyone. Um, but I remember the very first time when we raised our seed round, our seed investor had told me that, Tuche, your biggest challenge with this business is going to be just to explain how does it actually work while you are fundraising. Everything else is going to be a lot easier in terms of performance and you know, KPIs, etc. And I think everyone is coming up the curve that what we see when we started six years ago to explain what deep neural networks do why do we need them? Why does it take so much investment to build um, a knowledge graph? How is, how is a knowledge graph constructed? And there was a lot of you know, people feeling, asking, for example, statistical questions, which are irrelevant because at the scale of data that we are dealing with, which are millions and millions, some statistical questions become irrelevant, but I can see the market is moving super fast. Now we go to customer meetings, they already know what hyperparameters are, for example, before we even start the you know, conversation about it. And I see the same thing at the board level as well, like the saviest investors are coming up to speed quite fast.